Hello, everybody. You know, I never watch news in a minute. You know, so yesterday, I go watch news, South Africa, to follow this African election. You know, I go look. All the, the American moves, what did they make, man? Ladies and gentlemen, this world is going crazy. You know, as I said, they, because people don't understand white supremacy, right? People don't understand, and I want to make a help now understand white supremacy small this morning. White supremacists not be those people we they call black people racist. That is just overt racism. Mm -hmm. You see, the racism where they affect us is institutional racism, systemic racism, the racism embedded in our existence. Now that racism gone go me at the fight against the imperialism, capitalism, those things, those racist ideologies that build upon racist and um, racist institutions and systems. That's why they, they scatter my head, say some black people do for this world will be capitalists. How dare they, knowing fully well that all capital has already been stolen from black people. All our labor has already been stolen from us. All our resources, the control of it has already been stolen. We lack the capital. We lack the capital to compete in a capitalist world. We lack it. So for some black people, because they are lucky enough to be chosen, to have some privileges within that system, to the impose them on their people is evil. Listen to me. If you, what is systemic racism? All Europeans support systemic racism. That's why they cannot do anything to change their country or their system. That's why they play the game of fascism. They call fascism democracy. You think this is democracy? You think what we have in Nigeria is democracy? This is fascism. What is it? What is fascism? When one group uses their power and their influence to dominate the rest of society, other groups forever. Fascism is when one group uses their power and influence to dominate other groups for society forever and ever. That is fascism. And this democracy is a fascist idea. Because what is it? It is the rich people, the elite. Because we are not class conscious. I repeat, we are not class conscious. You can watch CNN. Go watch CNN. You watch CNN for 10 years. You can never hear them for CNN say, working class. Eh, I swear. The working families, people, the family, the hardworking families of America, the working fam, but you can never hear them use the word class. Go watch CNN, say. Go watch them. Because they want to remove class consciousness from your existence. This is the game. This is why when people like Jay Z make money, they start showing you that they are taking picture with all the white executives. That they are sitting on the table with the white executive to make you feel as if money. That if you make money, you can ever enter this class. That just make money, they will pick you or you join. It's a lie. Because they don't want you to be class conscious. Because you must understand. See, even if you have $10 million today, my brother, if you have $10 million, $10 million, you have more in common with a homeless man than you do with Dangote, who has billion. At the pit, if you have $10 million, you have more in common with a poor uh, homeless man than you do with Dangote. If you understand your class position and how you should use that 10 million in your society. But you don't want you to understand that. Don't you think that, that 10 million can turn to 100 million, can turn to 200 million, can one day become 1 billion or 10 billion? No, one not One generation later, you are broke again. One generation later, you are broke and your children are hustling again. Abiola, where is all the money? 
I tell people all the time, Abiola, where is uh, name one company of Abiola that is still working? Show me one Abiola company that is still functioning. Show me one Abiola company in this country, the richest man in Africa when he was alive. I've been able to tell you now at that time. The richest man, the richest man in Africa. Show me one company. Even all of them, when they do Yahoo, crap. All the dons, Yahoo don. Now no get money. Now no, now no ball is there. We not care. What they do? When they make noise? When they got their number day for this Lagos? When they are they bend there? They run this Lagos. Then Fred Ajudua. What you now? What balling now? The ball. Which ball in the ball? Go look what in the, the predecessors do. Where are they today? Where is that money? Where is anything that they owned? Where is it? All those things where they open club, newspaper, magazine, business, left, right, and center. Because we are not class conscious. Systemic racism is how white people keep their power. It's how European, Westerners, Arabs, Keep their power. They can tell you that they see the bank. They will tell you now. Let me explain systemic racism. The banking system, all institutions that whiteness impose is to control and exclude African people from wealth. Every institution in this world that white people use that we copy and replace in our countries. That's why we cannot progress. That's why we cannot develop. Because we take these their institutions and we replicate them in our country. And they do exactly what they're supposed to do. I will not think, say, now nah, we don't know what they do. Not knowing, say, the thing is doing exactly what it's meant to do. Go to America. Americans will tell you because the banks, because they program us, we don't understand. My African American friends, they'll say, the bank don't give them loan because it's owned by white people. All these white-owned banks don't like to give us loans because they're racist. Me, 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 me. I say it is not the owner of the bank that is racist. The bank itself, the institution of banking itself is what is racist. I tell them, come to Nigeria, my country. Come to my country, Nigeria. All the bank here are black owned, Abi. It's owned by black. You think it's owned by black? Okay. How many of us are they giving loan here? Just the way Africans are denied loans. They call them African Americans. So their kind African American is too long. Just the way Africans are denied loans in America. That's how we here are denied loans. And our bank is supposed to be black. That is systemic racism for you. Have you seen a white man that says, I don't like the bank? Like, oh, this bank, have, this bank is bad. Close banking, we should stop banking. Have you heard them before? Any white politician say, I hate bank? Have you seen any of your white friend that hate the bank? Go for America. They have the military industrial complex. Half of America's budget goes to the military industrial complex. Do you think there are any black and brown people that are in the military industrial complex business? Do you think so? Half of the budget automatically phew, just goes. And all your country, they have to patronize these white arm manufacturers. Take your budget from Nigeria, from Kengo, from everywhere. Everybody need gun. Everybody need bomb. Everybody need this. You have to go and pay these people. Police, American people too. The same thing. My African African friends in America, the police kill us because they are white. Even though they know that black police shoot black people today, but I say okay, let's say they are white. Okay, come to Nigeria. All the police are black. Who are they killing? Who are they shooting here? Not be me and you that they shoot for here. So it is not the policeman that is white. That is that is causing that. It is the policing itself, the institution itself. 
the institution itself. Have you heard anybody in the have you, that stand with our troops? You go to hear them, they talk. As much as American troops are killing black and brown people, all the politicians in America stand with the troops. They support the troops. So tell me. So as long as systemic racism, nobody wants to stop systemic racism. In a way, even we Africans don't want to stop systemic racism. So all these politicians, all these billionaires, you understand? They support these institutions. Knowing fully well the repercussions of these institutions in African lives. Is it the educational institutions we should talk about? I say just look at the quality of the education that they give Africans in America. Come to Nigeria and look at the education. Is this... Uh, the same way African children are shooting themselves, carrying guns to school in America, selling drugs in school. It's the same way our children are behaving in universities here. So now, it is imperative that we understand, say, the same people that are killing you with one hand, you know, are taking the other hand to, to rub your head. They are squeezing your neck with one hand, but they are using the, the other hand here to be rubbing your head, you know? But they now want you to think that they are, they are, they are good guys. What is going on in America? I turn on news. They are all shy. This whole Gaza and Palestine thing. You know, I can't remember. These are the same Europeans. We we'll be saying because of Donald Trump. You know, understand? The, the, the Donald Trump lose election. And people storm the capital. Now they, they do genocide. And Americans, let's give it to them, admit that it is their bomb and their money that is used to fund this genocide. And nobody is storming anything, no. It's time for peaceful. This one is they will use peaceful protests. Peaceful protests. I can't they think huh? say peaceful protests against genocide, but violent uh, attack because of Donald Trump. It doesn't all go away. It doesn't, you know, balance. People call it tell me, say, it is not the same. It's not the same people. I say, eh? The people that stormed up, they are Chinese. The, is Chinese. I don't know. They are under the Chinese constitution. Oh, Donald Trump is a cause worthy of breaking the law. But the supporters of african people among them don't think our own the genocide of a people is enough to break any law they still have to do peaceful i can't think out see why all this emphasis on peaceful many different worms came out under this post in my page different worms one come and say see be i joined 2012 protest now that 2012 protest where i joined rather where i start i don't even want to say i join now now me start Occupy Nigeria 2012. Nobody can tell me anything. On the 3rd of January, now I enter streets with the Joint Action Force and Uncle Femi Falano. 3rd of January. Before everybody come, they begin them. Uh, this uh, pastor, we won't be president. We'll be dying in name. Uh, we say God, we don't even win one, one vote. No, not your coach. That would be I mean, for their primary. We go join APC this year. Man, we did for Ogba. I don't forget his name. They are very useless. Uh, Bakari, Typhoon, Tunday Bakari. This is why I like people that are on my life. I give people that. Either way, I forget anything. When I go just. I know what I do to organize for that protest. I know what we did. I saw that Nigerians, this issue can spark change in this country. See, if Nigerians organize themselves, because. Even at that time, this was 2012, was how long? 12 years ago. I was like 30 years old. I never even get this kind of political experience. But even at that time, I did tell you, I don't want to mention their own name. All these so-called youth leaders, political youth leaders, where they can't join on the 10, who they go do meeting. I can never, I call on them for meeting for my mentor house for GRE. Say, let's form political organization and capture this. Me, I said the first question they asked me, say, who is 
uh, funding this party. As uh, this is our meeting. I say, you remember? I say funding this meeting. Now me call meeting. We we know which funding. Now we day here. Let's discuss as young people and create a platform to capture this energy. Me and I don't say at the top for we tell all these people we are the top. They already collect money. Oh. <laughs> they already say new party. They say don't go form new party called APC. Say they don't line themselves up. <laughs> Which say they don't line themselves up behind this elite. So me and they they mugu. Hey, she oh God. All of the nine bid house for Ireland turn to big man after this thing. All of them become big man. All of them open company. They do everybody. Agbada left and right. All round Agbada, around big man. Name this one. That. Ah! <laughs> See? <laughs> oh my God. That's my eye red. Almost this week I'm big. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is both too strong for wake and bake. My eyes just if you say you don't quit, which time you start again? I don't know see that everybody don't line up. Me, I was there naive, but I learned because of course when you do something like that. Without the political organization to capture the energy and use it to bring about political change, you are just shouting into the wind. Now that protest, I don't say I will never protest again in this country. If I don't get political organization where I go take benefits from the protest where I did inside, or I don't see any political organization where can carry the energy of that protest forward, I will never shout into the wind. Are they mad? They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh -uh. And I'm not a mad person. When I enter this uh, protest, now she said, Omo, we the people, we worked so that our oppressors capture that energy. And they see they for power till today. Till today, that enters energy. Now you put APC for power. I mean, I say enters. Yeah, enters. Uh, no, occupy Nigeria for a subsidy energy. Now I put APC for power. Now answers energy. Now I give OB momentum to carry second. I be told I will carry for third for national election for this country. Knowing fully well that OB's uh, government under him as governor, his SAS was the worst SAS in Nigeria. Now the governor with the worst SAS in Nigeria captured the energy of the NSAS. Why? Because we had. We lack political organization. We lack political representation. So why should I make the same mistake? Now that protest, what is the meaning of peaceful protest? And at the end of the day, no matter how peaceful, I repeat, no matter how peaceful Una protest, they must still beat Una. They must still kill Una. No matter, I repeat, no matter how peaceful, they must still throw tear gas. One thing must still, so far the Protest past one week, and they tell you, no matter how peaceful you are, so so far it passed one week. Government must bring violence. Imagine, there must be. So, what is the meaning of peaceful protest? If you lack political organization to exercise the wishes, the energy of that protest. So I look at Americans, we they even more politically advanced than us, doing the same thing. They keep when they keep black people, peaceful protest. I mean, what's it called? Uh, my friend and one of the greatest MCs, rap legend, uh, wise intelligent from poor righteous teachers, for his song. Uh, 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 yes, from the album. From the album Blue Clocks Clan, he said one thing and it was profound for me. If Black Lives Matter, peaceful protest. Yes, if Black Lives Matter, peaceful protest. If you want to know that your life matter, okay, put it to the test. Put it to the test. Let them choose between your life or property. Which one matters more? Let's see what the, the system will choose. 
I say Nigerians they complain, say youth burn down building for area where police kill six youths for Ojudu. Say youth burn down building for Ojudu. That's why I say, Muna they come say lucky, lucky protest. I think they want the year say lucky. Youth were killed all over Nigeria, from Lagos to northern Nigeria. Police open fire on youth all over this country during that period. So, me nobody they talk lucky. That's she they sound elitist to me. So now, youth first they born building, born this one. People went on TV, say how dare they born building? What is the meaning of they have done to? I can't ask. What is the value of an African life? What is the value of an African life? One building, two buildings, three buildings, four, ten, one thousand buildings. What is the value of an African life? Because I know, say, when some people that we are not even sure it was them kill about three thousand people in America during 9 11, those three thousand lives was what two countries of people <laughs> it didn't even go to the country of the person where duamu this is how you know white supremacy is mad the person where duamu is from saudi arabia they don't even touch those walls they don't say you really them they look on another country we just look like we just resemble the people where dua they wa afghanistan iraq who has wa 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 millions of life millions of buildings were destroyed Be all their treasury was looted every goddamn all the oil of iraq is still stolen to today all the gold of iraq everything in the park uh -huh. so what is the value so peaceful protest now they are the examples they give us for peaceful protest achieving something right the number one the main one is gandhi the number one example of peaceful protest working is india they give us the example of gandhi that's why you see gandhi everywhere i think we will enter some african people house you can see the picture of gandhi oh african people we are so stupid hey i see you go enter african man house black man because when you praise gandhi you go see gandhi picture for a house Gandhi, a racist, a te Gandhi hates black people more than white people hate black people. Gandhi writes letter to Queen of England. They tell us, they make him give them army. Say the way that they keep black people for South Africa, they don't they do away. May they give them, may he go help them, clear us where. I don't even want to go into a pedophilia. Say the fact that Gandhi used to his nieces, his brother's children, he was. I didn't want to go into his pedophilia. But the fact that he hates black people and because they claim to you that he's a peaceful man. Oh! Now, if Gandhi was so peaceful and good, if they say, say Gandhi led 3 million people, they walk across India, peaceful protest, and then India got independence. Hey! Ask yourself a question. If Naswati happened be that, if Indian people do they want to bring independence for indians with that that peaceful march of gandhi why did it indians vote for gandhi when he ran for election as prime minister she be run for election with that story why you don't become prime minister of india yeah 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 oh look good your uncle name is son gandhi Bogbe. <laughs> Bogbe. oh boy no, 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 no. oh boy <laughs> I say, I go for Cameroon, but I meet one guy. You know, say Cameroon was once a German colony. You know, say one guy, they did, he did that Adolf. Even German, don't you? Even German, you know, they did that Piki Adolf. Again. One guy, David Piki, that old man now, but his father named him Adolf. There's nothing black in Buka, don't you? There's nothing. That's why you must be African. You have to be African. There is nothing black people cannot do. I'm telling you, these black people are driving me crazy. <coughs> we cannot be stuck in this black even in nigeria colonialism is slavery in your own land we were enslaved here they call it colonialism but colonialism simply means slavery in your own land i tell everybody go and look at the structure of louisiana 
and their relations of Louisiana, the state of Louisiana during slavery to the black population. Look at the system of colonialism in Africa and the system to its majority black population. Because they give them another name for South Africa, they didn't call them apartheid. Now when the whole world on, they see only South Africa was doing it. Everybody looks at Africa, they say apartheid. That apartheid was happening with what they call colonialism all over Africa. It was slavery in your own land. We too, we move from slaves. We are all black still in Nigeria. Even Nigerians are finding it hard to be Africans. I am not surprised. Because they made us black men. And we don't mind. We are black and we are proud. Because everything they say about our blackness is a lie. In the truth of our blackness, there's something to be... Is, the truth of our blackness is pride. But we can't be stuck there. Because we must become African. That is the political power. The spiritual power. Black has no power. Hey, black power. Mm -mm. Black power is inside Africa. So you must be African. There's no black power without Africa. The black cannot have power. Black is powerless. The black must infuse Africa. And become Africa. We are not Africans, as Kwame Nkrumah said, because we are born in Africa. We are Africa because Africa is born inside of us. So anywhere we are in the world, once we tap into that Africa inside of us, is when our black become power. Damn, is here, born inside me. I don't really learn, um, I don't learn one verse yesterday. I don't sing them for my life. Today, later in the afternoon, I will learn another, the second verse. Tomorrow, I will. All Nigerians better learn the anthem. They have given you new anthem. This is why you must take political power. If you don't like somebody to just wake up one day and change your national anthem, take power from the person who... Take power from the person who... Uh, hey, or else, learn the anthem. Le anyway, we must even learn the anthem. To be patriotic. Hey. I bet any Nigerian... Now, Nigerian footballers, me, I won't teach anthem before next match. I'm available for singing lesson, vocal coaching, to teach you the anthem before the next match. Me look on enter TV now. Begin to chop mouth like the <laughs> yesterday. When I saw the uh, president go open the railroad, when they sing the new anthem, almost everybody quiet. Everybody, not only the band, they play the anthem. Everybody just silent, close their mouth. Nobody would try chop mouth. Nobody would try. <laughs> Nobody even <would> try. <laughs> I don't sing out for my life yesterday and I go here now for my life. Leave me. Look at me do this by topic finish. So, Gandhi, have you asked ourselves, how come Gandhi no win prime minister of India if he was so low with his peaceful moves? Nothing is ever achieved peacefully. The next example they like to give us now, Mandela. Mandela, eh, peaceful. Why did Man if Mandela was so peaceful, why was Mandela in jail? Why was Mandela in jail? If Mandela was so peaceful, what was he doing in jail? What was he doing in jail? I do not say that in peaceful act put him for jail. So the peaceful action, what did they do now? Come on. Mandela The next example they give us is Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was so peaceful. How come he caught a bullet in the neck? If Martin Luther King was so peaceful, how did the bullets catch him in the neck? So that means that even if you, you are peaceful, it doesn't mean they will be peaceful with you. Abi? Even if you believe that story, say Martin Luther King is a peaceful protest, he do. Say the civil rights movement was peaceful. The two leading African people of the civil rights movement was Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. They were both violently killed. And somebody is still telling you that the civil rights movement was peaceful. Peaceful from who? Even if you believe the natural history, the lie, the lie story, whether they call history, even if you believe that, your logic and common sense, looking at the end of those leaders that led this peaceful movement, looking at how they died, is that not a violent death? If while in the middle of that movement, they, as they do the movement, they die like that, how can anybody say the movement was non-violent? When the leaders 
were violently killed. So this non-violent thing must be a propaganda. It must be some kind of strategy because there was nothing non-violent about the civil rights movement. If both the leaders were violently killed. Do you know who Kwame Ture is? Stokely Carmichael. Another leader of the civil rights movement that had to live his life in exile. Do you think African Americans got their rights peacefully in America? Then you must have forgotten the Black Panther Party. You must have forgotten this life. Every day when they say, I they dress like Black Panther. But these same people, I don't even want to go into Black Panther of Wakanda. That nonsense. That's the story for another day. Black Panther Wakanda. That's the story of another day. But the real Black Panthers. Everybody knows that they exist, yet we believe that this movement was non violent. There's nothing that African people have won in this system that was non violent. Nothing where we don't achieve, nothing where we get today where our ancestors don't win through violence. Now their violence now it make Europeans negotiate. Now the violence of our ancestors now it make Europeans anything where they negotiate, where they agree, say we could do. As I say, for their land we were enslaved. In our lands they enslaved us. For us to move up from that position, every single step we took to move up from that place where these people put us by force was done by force. They will come tell you, say, we will by force. Now it ends slavery. I hope so many of you remember the, I do almost three hour lecture on this topic. Now me and Daddy Freeze, my friend, enter quarter when they talk about one will by force and the abolitionist movement. Why would they believe that nonsense? I show the amount of resistance. The war. I see. Look at Iraq. I tell people say, look at Afghanistan today. You see Afghanistan today. You see the way America run come out for Afghanistan. You see the way they run come out. You see say Afghanistan. They want the Afghan, the Taliban of Afghanistan won that war. You can see it clearly with your two eyes today. Oh ha! Say they won the war. America base. Wait. 10, 15 years. Let them write the history of this thing. You go hear how they talk, say, they go talk, say, it was Joe Biden that withdrew the troops. I swear to God, wait for, you ready to talk about ready? No. Say, Joe Biden withdraw his troops. Joe Biden withdrew, why did Joe Biden withdraw the troops? If he did not withdraw the troops, they should have stayed in Afghanistan. Why did he withdraw the, why did he withdraw the troops? See, they kill on a finish. I say just 20 years, they don't go talk, say, Taliban defeat America for war. They go say, America, say, now Joe Biden decide to withdraw the troops. Just the way they tell us, we will back force an abolitionist movement, make you abolish the slave trade. We will not be say, we they send their children back for England in coffins by the thousands every month. They just, will they send coffins of their children in this resistance against the dastardly act that they were performing against us. Now, this is about a joke. Over 10, I mean, when did uh, Tosan, Luv Tosan Luvicho of Haiti, about 100 years before Wilbur Force ever thought of being born, Tosan Luvicho abolished slavery in Haiti. Who be Tosan Luvicho, your ancestor? The slaves of Haiti, are, they re. They, re-energize their African spirits. Go read the history. They bring the fire and shun go outside for Haiti. All revolutions, one mule, they swear out on the, by the gods of Africa. They became African men again after being enslaved. One fight war against the Spanish, against the French, against the British. Desalines. So after they won the French in the first war, the way you both they do, they now invited Louvuto to negotiate. To. They arrest him, kidnap and go to France, thinking that if they took the leader, the army will crumble. They don't say he was a leader of leaders. That's why I said, don't ever, you can't be a follower. You must be a leader. Your leader is a representation of the leadership. There's no one leader. You don't understand? 
the people when they inside the organization must be highly politicized. Nobody, if you remove one, there's one million wars. Better not remove the one where they put for front because that one they put for front is the one that is calm. We go feel the following at the top. If I go remove that one, and when Rukulo Wale, we no one even hear, we no one negotiate. Go ask America for Vietnam. The way America said, go, in Vietnam, America will say they withdrew from Vietnam. America withdrew. America withdrew from Afghanistan. Not be say Viet Cong she them. <coughs> Not be say Taliban she them. British abolish slavery. Not be say we she them come out. We the can't use Connie way. I said, I tell you what I'm saying. See now, Afghanistan, after Afghanistan has she them, Afghanistan is suffering. They don't seize all their money. Afghanistan has to come and beg, be begging them now. Just the way Louvicho, they kidnap him, they won't come go reinvade. Bonaparte, a old Napoleon, send him. Desalines, the uh, second in command, when now took over, he defeats the army of Bonaparte. That was Napoleon, Bonaparte's first loss. He made, all the whole Europe shake. They don't believe the African army can defeat their best army. Go and check the history. And uh, upon Louvicho Toussaint's uh, ascension, as president of Haiti, he was the first man in the world, a black man, to abolish slavery. That anybody that set their foot on the land of Haiti is a free man. That beacon of uh, Louvicho's victory sparked slave revolts all over America. All over everywhere where we did. We say we can do it. We begin from Brazil to we begin to she them. They could no longer handle slavery. Don't want to be slave again. Now only that is we'll be slave, but that time we don't vest. Our eye don't open. Because they abolish slavery. Nobody can tell you to say white man abolish. White man never in his life. Abolish anything where they give him benefits. You have to make him through brute force. They will tell you. They withdrew. They abolished slavery. They withdrew from Afghanistan. They withdrew from Vietnam. Now lie. We withdrew from Korea. Now lie. But these people know. So they put all these fake stories to make you think that you can reason with them. That ah, should be your ancestors did it by peace. Now they stopped slavery by one day. Should be now we just look at ourselves. One day say slavery is bad, and we talk to ourselves. We stop them. Um, we can be reasoned with. Sit down and be peaceful. Now go talk to us. We are reasonable. That's what all these black leaders, these stupid puppets all over the world, this is what they sell to you. The lie to keep you docile so you don't organize. Your violent act as an African man today, not be to throw blow. Your ancestors don't throw all that blow, don't scatter all their face. Now they don't say your power is within your grasp. That's why they use distraction to keep you from taking the action you need to take. So they go to lead you astray. Now they do not say Go and kill yourself for nothing. Go and protest for nothing. No, you don't need to kill yourself. Or Organize yourself under some ideology. Agree on the ideology. Set the goals of that ideology and go for it. Abandon the nonsense. You have to make sacrifice at the bid house right now. Because at the bid house, I'm making immense lifestyle sacrifices. Because I don't get the kind of money when say I go to the bid house. At the same time, I go to drink champagne. It's not happening. That's the sacrifice. We want to make this country good. We must give up some things and concentrate. We must also, we must give it time. We must put our time, our effort. Nigerians, let's not the expect. No, not people only Nigerians. Africans all over the world. We are expecting to go inside the club one night. Drink, party, and dance. Just come outside. See, say everything don't deal with <coughs> And they tell you, this is the ideal scenario of black liberation for all of now. This is the ideal scenario of African liberation for African people today. They say, all of them don't go inside club. Dance, drink, do everything all night. What do they do? Just come outside in the morning. Bleh. Everything is okay. Ah, wow. Who did this? Give him a round of applause. Wow. Very good job here. <laughs> It can't happen like that. Because if you take your time to study how it has, how you have, how you will reach here, the only answer you need is to organize. And that's not what I don't want to do. 
I don't know why they fear. The word, the best say the word now atomic bomb for black people here. Once they hear organized politics, somebody will say, I don't like politics. Are you crazy? Anybody that says he doesn't like politics, you are a fool. Because let me tell you something. No, not even that. When you say I don't like politics, that is a political statement. Don't you know that? If you talk, say I don't like politics, that is a political statement. There's no escaping politics, bro. I say some of my musician, my musician friends, colleagues say, I tell them the same thing. Uh, me, I think they like play political music. I tell them, say, that statement is political already. So you are just saying you pick a side, you pick your side that like you don't want to change the world. You don't want to change your situation. You don't want to fix your country. When you say, I don't like politics, you just want to say, I don't want to change my country. Everything is okay for me like this. So just say that. Say it. Be brave. Now, this is not a cunning way. Now, they deceive That's why people follow the wrong people. Because they say, I bet forget politics, live life, but they do charity, all these things. But that forget politics means even that charity you are doing, you don't want it to change anything. Because that charity gone is a political act. But it's a negative political act. Why would I like only negative political action? Maybe you should say, I, I want to take only negative political action. Say the truth. The, nothing for your life that is not political. The water you drink. The road you move on, the school your children go to, the way you make money, how you can spend the money, where you can take the money to, where you go, where you can go, how you can go, everything about everything you do, who you can sleep with, who you cannot sleep with, who you can marry, who you cannot marry, when you can marry, when you can, every goddamn thing in your, but you have the audacity to look me in the face and say, I am not political, I am not politics. No, it's just, it is, it is wicked. It is cowardly. Say your real mind. Say your real mind. Say your real mind. You know? Because then they talk their real mind. So to end this life, I want to talk about Stokely Kamaki and Kwame Turi. I don't know if many of you don't see that video. There's a very profound video where he was talking to a woman about peace and justice. Because peace is the word of the oppressor. It's only the oppressor that wants peace at all costs. Only the oppressor wants peace at all costs. The true revolutionary and the oppressed people want justice. It is justice at all costs. Because you can have a peaceful society that is unjust. You can have a society that is completely peaceful but is unjust. So me, I'd rather have a society that is in turmoil in the pursuit of justice. I want a just society. Because peace can exist with the absence of justice. So we must seek a just society. Peace can never be an excuse to negate justice. So, what is our own, even the colonial movement of Africa? Everything we gain, every, ha, no African country gained their independence by any peaceful means, even Nigeria. But they come and lie to you in your school, they don't teach you, what did they teach us about independence in our school? Highlight like when they play match, you know, they play 90 minutes match, then you can't they can't show you only the highlight when boy hit bar, when boy enter net, when somebody collect yellow card, when somebody collect red card, when they do substitution, they go dead. Is that the match? What if those things will happen? The passing, the only one, two, the little, little things will make the match be the match. You don't see those things. So you don't understand the intricates, intricacy of what it means for us to be independent today. Even if you believe in a peaceful, what thing happened to all the leaders that brought this independence? Not be all of them like, you school did that kill. So who was peaceful about that? <coughs> but at the same time, I don't change my stance about uh, uh, my position and my stance about Arab people in Gaza. You know, uh, colonial colonialism is bad everywhere it happens. And me, I also condemn Arab colonialism in Northern Africa. 
you know, until the Arabs of this world that we need to have that conversation with the way they treat African people on this continent. I mean, look at the recent action in Tunisia. It's either you are completely my ally or you are completely my enemy. Me, I need to play half step. You know, what is happening in Gaza is sad, but I'm not engaging until the Arabs of this world are willing to engage the Africans on this, of this world on the Arabic colonialism and their treatment of African people in North Africa. Bam! Criteria to me, you know, until that, everybody carry your cross, fam. You know, carry your cross. I got my shit to do. You got your shit to do. You get me. Have a good one.